Welcome to Redstone class. Today we're covering advanced door placement. We're going to name the three rules of doors, we're going to summarize some of their properties, and then we're going to do some tricks with what we learned. Then you'll have a homework assignment. Let's get out a wooden door and follow along. So these, right next to me, are the 16 states a door can be in. There are 16 possible states a door can be in. And the reason for that is there are three different properties of a door. There is the direction it's facing, so north, south, east, or west. There is the side that it is hinged to, which is left or right, and then the door can be opened or closed. And so 4 times 2 times 2 is 16 possibilities. And so you'll see that these look identical, and in fact, in pixel for pixel, they may be identical, but not in regards to the redstone signal. And so you'll notice that if the redstone is off, these are in a different state, whereas to contrast that with a redstone torch placed over here would cause these to be open whereas causing a redstone torch over here would cause these to be closed. So there are 16 states total. Essentially, you can, it can be in the same orientation, in the same location, but powered or unpowered. And so that actually matters, and we'll get to that more as we go along. So there are three rules you should know with a door. Rule number one is that the side of the block you place it on, so on the right half or the left half, is the side that you're going to have a hinge. So if I place the block here, the door ha handle is going to be on the right. See? And if I place the door on this half, the door handle is going to be on the left, like so. And you can rely on that. See? Hinge on the right, door handle on the left, every time. And the same is true the other way. I can predict which way the door is going to face. And if you have a redstone signal on that block, it's going to be a little bit more obvious because it will appear on that side. So rule number two is the pairing rule. The pairing rule is that when you have a door down already, the new door is going to want to face that other door. And so if I have a door right here, if I place a door here, no matter where I click, the door handle is going to be on the left side. It's going to be facing this door. It wants to be with that door. And so the same will be true over here. And so whenever you're placing a door next to another door, it's going to want to line up, even if it's on the back side where they don't line up like that. And so if you were to break this one and replace it, it's always going to succeed. So if you go like this, and then this, and then this, clicking in the left half on all three blocks, it's always going to pair up because they want to pair with each other. So this one has the handle over there. This one wants to pair with that one this one wants to pair with that one and now they're paired. And so that's why sometimes it takes people a few tries because they don't know to place the handles where they want them on purpose from rule one. Rule number three is a rule that a lot of people don't understand. It's the hinge rule. And the hinge rule is that if there is a block on the bottom half against it and not on the other side, the hinge will go there, no exceptions. And so no matter where I click here, the hinge is going to go here and the door handle will be on this side. It's very similar to the pairing rule, but they'll never conflict with each other because essentially you'd have to have things in, two things in the same place at the same time for them to conflict with each other, so it's not a problem. And so if I click here, where's the handle going to be? No matter where I click, because there is a block here, the ha handle's going to be on this side on the right, the hinges are going to be right here. There's nothing you can do to prevent that. But that's rule three. So those are the three rules of doors to understand. And there's some very interesting implications with them. So let's summarize real quick some of the things you should know about doors. So for one, in Java Edition, they can be placed underwater and it'll be dry underwater like so. They will displace water. And so you can use them to be able to breathe deep underwater if you need them. And you can place them like so and create regions underneath the water to be able to breathe. So some other things you can know about them is that they can't float in midair. They have to be placed on a solid block. They could be placed on a slab. But if you break a block, they're always going to drop. Another rule to know is that lava can produce a fire next to them, but they don't actually burn. Um, so if you're near lava and it's near something that's that's wooden that would burn, you might want to be careful with putting them near lava. They don't stop mobs from spawning. So mobs could spawn in these regions even though the doors are contained in them. So if you had doors like this, their mobs would be able to spawn on these squares. It would not stop you from being able to have mobs spawning there. 
Another thing you can know that a lot of people probably don't know is that you can actually stand on the middle block of a door. And what do I mean by that? A, blower is, a, a door is two blocks tall. So you can actually, if I were to move this and to stand here and jump and right click the door, you can see that I'm standing on the bottom block of the door. So you can actually use them as a clever parkour, I guess, style of, of moving things around. And so you can actually stand, and your hitbox is on them as you would expect. But you can actually, whenever you right click a door to open or close it, if you're in the air, you can land and you can stand on the middle of a door. So some of the things you can do with a door include a zombie trap. Um, this is, if there's no other path for a zombie to take, a zombie will pass through here, and when the zombie passes through here, let's say there's a villager on the other side and he walks in, he's trapped. And so he's not able to get out. And if this was if there was sun, that he would burn. And so that's a neat trick you can do with doors. Another thing to understand is because of what we said about doors, it's possible to create trolling doors or a door illusion because of the fact that these doors can be in the same exact state while being powered or unpowered. And so these doors look just like the other doors, but they are not the same doors. And so are these doors the same? They are not. And so I can walk through these doors, but I can't walk through these doors because these doors were placed at a different angle. So now both sets of doors are set to be closed. And so now these doors are open and now these doors are open. And you can make trolling doors that slam in someone's face. Now there's a trick that a lot of people don't know about, which is the secret closet trick. So if you will watch, I have a mock-up of the interior of a house here. If we go into this bedroom, do you see anything out of the ordinary? Let's try that again. So if I were to go into this bedroom, do you see anything out of the ordinary? Now if I close the door, you'll see that there is a closet behind the door. And this relies on the fact that a door with its hinge can be located in such a way that, especially if you use one of the new doors, the spruce door or some of the solid doors, that it completely conceals another room. And so maybe someone's poking around your base that you don't want them to spy things. You can actually conceal another room that's only accessible if you know that it's there. You can see it once you know it's there, but if you don't see it, you won't even realize it's there. So it's hidden in plain sight. So. That's all we have for the specifics of doors. Hopefully you learned something from that. And now let's get to the homework assignment. So the homework assignment is for you to find a way to build this such that when you touch one pressure plate, both doors open. See if you can manage that. So your first homework assignment would be, if you haven't been following along and trying to build some of these and playing with doors, do that, go through and build some of the things we built. And then your project is to try and build a pair of doors. And you can use any redstone you want to do it. My recommendation, you should be able to do this with just redstone torches and some dust underneath. And in the next video in this series, we will cover how to do that. We'll cover the answers to the homework. That's everything for today. I hope you do the homework. If you do, you'll learn and be able to retain more from practicing with redstone. And that's it. Have a good rest of your day. Class is dismissed.